Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Bagram Radian here in Point Clear, Alabama for the annual Aerospace Alliance Conference, uh, an amazing confederation of the four aerospace and defense states that are in this region, Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, and Louisiana, where so much of the nation's space uh, infrastructure is based. And we're honored to have with us Dr. John Watrett, uh, who is the chancellor of uh, Embry-Riddle uh, Aeronautical University, one of the world's truly great aeronautical uh, learning institutions. I know that you date from the 1920s originally, but that the university itself is just since uh, 1970, but, but still just a, just a powerhouse in the field. John, you're the chancellor uh, at Embry-Riddle. Um, you know, one of the key focuses of this conference is sort of human capital development. You know, as you see the demand for aerospace services over the next decade, whether the number of pilots, whether the number of maintainers, how does Embry-Riddle fit into this ecosystem to support this next generation that's so key to America's economic health? Embry-Riddle started as a flight school and, and maintenance school, but it's expanded out from there to over 80 degree programs from associates to PhD, covering all of aviation aerospace needs. Well, so we are, we are from the, the flight, the engineering, the business aspect, the human factors part of it, and, and we always continue to move into the leading edge like cybersecurity, drones, unmanned aerial vehicles, and, and uh, big data that's associated with the aviation industry. So we, we're covering all aspects, and we, we, we know that pilots are important, but there is a broad need for other professions within the aviation industry that Embry-Riddle is able to prepare uh, for the workforce. Uh, but what are the keys uh, to doing that, right? I mean, you have um, much better distance learning programs than sort of the course in a box, which yeah. used to what used to learn distance learning used to be. Uh, but you and I last night over dinner were also talking about cost and how to make that education affordable for more people to get more diversity. Talk to us about all of the programs and and why the alliance is such an important approach to try to satisfy the nation's future needs. Well, Enver Riddle covers all because we've got two residential campus, traditional environment for students coming out to high school going straight, living, learning on the campus, which many people do. But we also have a wonderful online distributed model that we deliver, and it, it's US News World Report. We've been in the top five and been in the top position for, for many years. So we know how to deliver the aviation using current technologies, using virtual labs, uh, crash labs to get it out and and by doing that it makes it affordable for anyone to come in we we have fi uh, many military personnel that go through while they're active duty they can get their degree prepare themselves for the aviation industry after leaving the military we've got young people that uh, affordability of going to a residential campus they have a love for aviation but we are able to do that by providing it uh, online environment for them getting the same quality of education same quality of uh, 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 aerospace uh, uh, needs that we do in the residential environment. Um, everything uh, in life has become more expensive and so that puts a greater demand for example on institutions to raise money for example and to have endowments and that oftentimes makes the biggest difference between whether or not um, you can underwrite that higher quality of learning for, for a lesser uh, price. What's what's the challenge of doing that in this? Um, you know, it, it's a it's a very rich financial environment at this point. Thankfully, the economy is doing well. But what are some of the the challenges and the nuances? Because it seems like every university is in a dead run competition with every other university in order to be able to attract the best talent. How are you doing that as the chancellor of well, of this extraordinary school? Education is expensive, and and being a, a very STEM technical uh, uh, university. Our labs and equipment are expensive, so when you, on the residential component, we need to have that, the investment in there to make it a quality program to meet the needs of the industry. But we're also leveraging technology to help support the young people who haven't got the means and the family means to come and live away from home. They can stay at home, they can work, they can do part-time or they can do full-time education in the online environment but still get that same part of it. And, and we do provide scholarships for it. There is, there is uh, financial aid within the system that we provide and they can also make use of the, the traditional financial aid from, from Pell Grants and other grants that they can use. So we package it well so that they can get through and make it affordable. And what are some of the most key enabling technologies? Um, is it virtual immersive? I mean, you know, everybody has this tendency of thinking online learning, but online learning is 
dramatically changing as well, right? I mean, it's not just watching a YouTube video or a Khan Academy or something like that. Not at all. Online learning is very active now. It's not a passive sitting there watching uh, a video or a talking head uh, professor that has been recorded in the classroom. These are very active uh, uh, environments that the students participate. Our faculty is faculty-led, so the faculty are in the classroom with the student, be it virtually. We're using uh, virtual reality, we're using all the tools. The learning management systems that we have now are able to provide chat, video, and all other aspects that it really makes it a, a real environment for the student and they make, uh, to, to learn the materials. And how do you think, if you look forward 10 years, because that's actually kind of your, your job yeah, is right. to start, look deep into yeah. the future, where, how, does, how is learning going to be changing as you look 10, 20 years ahead? And what are some of the changes you guys are making to sort of get to that new future? Well, I think it's, it's getting that, that mixture of the modalities of the residential in-class um, mode along with online and, it, and it, we're looking to into the future we're looking there's going to be a retirement of our, uh, within the industry we need to fill that get that pipeline going now to get attract young people into it we are very eager to do diver, get diversity into the aviation workforce and so working with schools at the early age from the uh, from the middle school onwards and even before to provide uh, summer camps and get them excited about the aviation industry so that they will be there and see aviation as a future career for them filling the gap that's going to occur with retirements and the growth of the aviation industry of course. Um, almost everybody I know who's in this field did it because of a childhood passion. They loved aviation. Mm -hmm. uh, you did. You're, you're actually, I should have also said, you're a fellow of the Royal Aeronautical uh, Society, which uh, pretty much is the pinnacle of, of aeronautical societies. Uh, but um, how do you attract a new generation? You know, there are all these science programs, kids visit museums, and at the end of the day, you sometimes don't see that kind of output. They don't even stay in STEM, much less staying in STEM and then staying in um, uh, rocketry, for example, or aeronautics. And Elon Musk is a little bit exciting for people, but the question is whether or not they do it. And I know so many kids who were very excited about it when they were very young, and then they end up going into finance, or they end up, um, you know, going into a trade or something else, but not in aeronautics. What are, what are the keys after all of these years doing it to make sure that you grab that attention and then actually lead it to something that is productive at the end well, of the day. Well, we want to see it. Any kid loves planes. They'll look up and see planes, and, and the first thing they think about is being a pilot. And, you know, over the years, being a pilot has had negative connotations in terms of uh, work hours, in terms of uh, uh, compensation, things like that. But we want to make sure that everyone understands that aviation is more than a pilot. Aviation is a broad industry, it's a growing industry, both in the aviation side and the aerospace side. So you, you know, we, we see that the, the numbers globally are continuing to grow. People can get actively involved in it. There is drones, unmanned aerial vehicles, and uh, unmanned autonomous vehicles in itself. That, that all comes together now. That there's exciting ways for kids to get into it, and a kid can pick up, you know, with the use of gaming theory and and, and the video games, they have an, an an ability to do that, and can come in and get it, and it becomes exciting because it's technology. Technology always excites people, so we just need to direct them in the right way to the aviation field. Dr. John Watrett, the Chancellor of Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. Sir, thanks very much. Thank Absolute pleasure. And look forward to talking to you because it's an absolutely uh, a tremendous era for aviation. I don't think people fully realize what an incredible era we're going into. And I think uh, I appreciate and I think what we need to do is get you down on campus and see all the fun toys that we have for these young people to come and experience and go through the experience of getting into the aviation aerospace field. And that, that is one of the things that we really is a big selling point. You know, anyone that comes onto campus, it, it's a huge wow factor because you're right on the airport, you've got a fleet of 100 planes, you've got all the, the engineering offices, you've got wind tunnels, you've got everything that you, every toy you would want for the aviation industry, and it, it gets people excited about it. And wow, it's really terrible that it's in Daytona Beach, Florida. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad place to be either. <laughs> exactly. Airplanes, beach, good weather. How do you beat it? John, thanks very Thank much. You. Best of luck, and I'm going to take you up on that invitation. We're definitely going to come down and visit with you. Excellent. Look, look forward to it. Thank you.